Since Jerry can't seem to leave anything alone. Well, you guys might remember when I did the trunk of the car before, I did it all out of scrap metal. And now that we're putting all this fresh metal inside the car, I can't leave the bowl enough alone. We're gonna cut all of it out and take a put fresh metal in so it matches the rest of the car. Um, since we couldn't mount the air tank where it was last time, where we wanted it, we had to move it. So now we have an open area in the back and we still haven't figured out where to put the battery in this car. So we're gonna tear everything out, cut it all out, hopefully build a battery mount and put some new metal in it. All right, let's do it. All right, now that everything's cut out of the rear, all the old metal's removed, it's wide open back there. First thing I need to do is actually build a tray for the battery to sit in. It's gonna to go to the left of the fuel tank, tucked up in there, that's where it's gonna go. So. So what I've done is I've taken and cut a piece of sheet metal to match this angle here and I've bent the edge there. Now the reason I'm doing this is I need to make the inner fender wells for the back so I can then shape out the trunk. So I have to do this first. Now this is just 16 gauge. I'm going to tack it in a few places here. I've jacked up the tire in order to compress it into the fender as much as possible to hold the sheet metal to shape. Um, and then I'll just pry it the rest of the way that way I don't burn the tire. I cut a few relief cuts in it so I can bend it and shape a little more. That way it's not straight up and down. <laughs> Buford comes help sometimes. Now I've got the template. It doesn't look like much, but once I trace it on metal, I can cut it out. Now I've got to work on the piece that goes around the battery box. This template's going to be completely different because it's going to have so many different bends in it. So I need to take my time and get this right. I'm going to cut a piece of metal bigger than what I need. That way there's plenty of extra room to allow for the bends. At this point I've got it all cut out so I'm going to transfer it to the sheet metal. Now I'll take and tape it in a few places so that the stencil doesn't move while I'm tracing it.
Once it's all cut out, I'll start breaking the 90 degree turns on it and then I'll fine tune it with a handbrake and a seamer. The hard part is installing the piece. It's much easier to get a piece of paper is than a rigid piece of sheet metal. Now we have to work on one of the last pieces to put in because we weren't able to fold all the pieces out of one sheet. All right guys, well, as you can see, we got those pieces made. We'll have to pick it up next week. Now, I know this wasn't super eventful, but it's gotta be done and it takes a lot of time to get these panels exactly right. So, we'll pick it up next week and keep moving across the truck. So, before I go, I don't know if I ever talked to you guys about an air shear. Um, it's a great tool to have. You saw me cutting some of the sheet metal with it. It, it makes a big difference. So if you can, I picked this one up for 20 bucks. There's way more expensive ones, but this one's Harbor Freight, 20 bucks. I've had it for years and hasn't let me down yet. So if you can afford one, grab one. It'll definitely cut down the time of cutting sheet metal. But all right, guys. Well, do me a favor, like and subscribe if you want to see some other ones over here. Appreciate it, guys. Have a great week.